Good morning, church. The Lord be with you. It's good to see everyone here today, those worshiping in person and those worshiping with us online. Thank you for carving out time to make worship a part of your weekly rhythm. We are glad that you're here. We gather for worship so that God might be glorified and that the people of God might be sanctified or shaped into the loving image of Jesus Christ. And we will direct our attention to those acts of worship in just a moment. But before we do, uh, we have a few brief announcements, and these things keep us going in the right direction. The people of God can do great things as long as we're moving in the same direction. Uh, we have an insert in your bulletin about ushers and greeters as the CDC begins to lift guidelines and regulations and helping us all be more safe in, in the midst of hopefully uh, the, the end or the new normal that we are living into regarding the COVID pandemic. We're going to need some ushers and some greeters. Um, these are important roles. It's not just something that we tag on to the worship service, but if you have guests that visit, studies show that within the first three minutes, they make up their minds whether they're coming back to your church or not. So the greeters are incredibly important because if you make a guest, and I use the term guest instead of visitor, because visitors are those we weren't expecting. Guests are those for whom we've prepared the house, and we are welcoming them with open arms that day. So if you have guests coming to worship, and they meet the greeters first off, and the greeters are uh, very loving and welcoming, then they're going to feel more comfortable in this worship space. So, um, uh, we may be re-envisioning a little bit for how the ushers operate in regards to the, uh, to the offering and that sort of thing, but all of that will play out as we incorporate that back into the worship service. If you're interested in serving as an usher or greeter, uh, that is in your bulletin. Please fill that out, and we can get those assembled, and we can um, uh, get a rotation put together for that. Um, the biggest announcement uh, this week is that this Wednesday night at 545, this Wednesday at 545, everyone say 545, in the lower parking lot, we're going to have a welcome summer bash. And this is predominantly for our student ministries. It's for them to celebrate the end of the school year. It's also uh, to make sure that folks in the community know that our student ministries are back up and they are in full effect and we are back in our normal regiment. We have an awesome youth director. We have an awesome children's director. We have some new things that we have planned for the fall with an after school program. We have vacation Bible school. There's so many things that are in the works and that are being discussed amongst our student ministries. This is kind of a kick off into the summer and also to let the community know that we're going to be safe, but we are going to have events for our youth and students to come and enjoy. Everyone is invited. Uh, there's going to be pizza, I believe, is what's printed in the bulletin. I think that's the uh, decision that was come to. You know, we're going to make this as safe as possible. If you have pizza, you don't have to put your hands all over everybody else's slice of pizza. If you do, then that now becomes your slice of pizza. So don't be wasteful, please. So we're, we're trying to make this safe, prepackaged stuff um, so that the community can come and enjoy. We would like for everyone to come, all ages. My Bible study will not meet this Wednesday. I want everyone to come, uh, invite the community, invite your grandkids, invite your kids, and invite folks just to come and have a good time. If nothing else, it's a good excuse for the church to have a party, 
And, um, you know, Jesus believed in parties and things like wedding banquets and stuff like that. And he had a good time and did good ministry at them. So I think we can follow suit in that. So this Wednesday at 545, a welcome summer bash for our students. All ages are invited to just come and enjoy. There'll be inflatables and games and food and all sorts of other stuff. We're really, really excited about that. Um, there will be a trustee meeting next Sunday. And um, be looking for uh, some information coming out from the trustees as the CDC uh, softens the, the guidelines for those that have been vaccinated or for those that have chosen to be vaccinated or those that have not that are still comfortable gathering in groups. Uh, the bishop and cabinet are supposed to release a statement no later than May 21st uh, uh, as far as their do no harm document that will also soften some of the regulations and things. So we're really looking in that direction. So be on the lookout for that. Trustees meet next Sunday if we need to finalize anything there. Uh, a ladies conference we're looking at having scheduled on August the 21st from 10 to 2 o'clock. Spread the word and tell your friends if you have any questions. Dee Dee Filippo is in charge of that. I think that is all of those announcements. Now, also as part of our gathering this morning, we've come to that time of year where diplomas are handed out, caps are thrown into the air, and we have students moving from one uh, grade to the next or some that are actually finishing their course of study whether it be high school or college and we actually had a few pre-k grads that we recognized this morning moving out of the fun-filled halls of pre-k and moving into the daunting space of kindergarten so with that being said we would like to recognize uh, a high school graduate that we have in our congregation today Amanda if you would come forward and we have Sheki Songlao who is graduating from Florence High School. Is that correct? And Amanda has something she would like to present to you. And I would like for, for her to present that to you. And then I would like to offer a prayer over you. Let me pray for you. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless Sheki as she finishes her course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside her and all who supported her along the way. Walk with her as she leaves this chapter of education to move forward in life. Take away her anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen her many talents and skills. Instill in her a confidence in the future that you plan, O oh Lord, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. For the sake of Jesus Christ. And together the people of God said, Amen. Congratulations. Now hear this word of good news as we begin our time of worship together. God loves you, and so do we. Welcome to worship at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church. All who are able, please stand for our song call to worship and the entrance of the light of Christ. You may be seated. 
We've come to the time in our worship service where we gather our prayers and our praises into one. We offer our best and our worst before God. Those things that are hanging around our neck like a millstone and those things that also have us coming in here with shouts of joy and acclamation. So what prayer requests, what names do we have to lift up before our awesome and loving God today? Say that one more time. Okay. What joys do we have to lift up before God today? Thanks be to God. <laughs> yeah, when they graduate, it kind of kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Uh, when they were just little ones running around the front yard, scraping their knee or chasing or, or looking for Easter eggs, and now they're walking across the stage, about to head out into the world. Lord, have mercy. It is God has blessed us with so much. And God is faithful to hear and be active in our prayer requests and our hurts. Won't you please pray with me? Loving God, astonished and overcome by joy, our eyes look heavenward where we trace the ascension of our beloved Savior Jesus Christ to you. We would like to stand here looking heavenward and thinking about how much Jesus means to us, but... We're called to lower our gaze and get moving to serve you in this world. We can hold the image of his ascension in our hearts, but our hands and spirits must be ready to do the work that you have set before us. You have asked us to live out our resurrection faith through acts of service, offering peace and justice, hope and healing to all whom we meet. And one way that we live out our resurrection faith is by lifting up the names of those near and dear to us in our prayers during our worship service. We've called some out by name. Some we've simply lifted up in our hearts. There are so many spoken and unspoken requests here today, God. And we want your healing mercies for all who are ill, for all who mourn, for all who are lost and all who are alone. We also want to rejoice with those who have received special joys during this week. And all these things are important to us, as we know they are important to you. Help us to live the prayers that we ask. <clears throat> Help us to be agents of healing and mercy, of peace and hope. We offer our lives and our prayer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer it in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All who are able, please stand and join us in our next congregational hymn, one of the greatest hymns ever penned by a great man, Charles Wesley. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Let's pray. God, thank you for hearing the prayers of your people. And we pray a special prayer for uh, Jamie and her family as uh, her mother continues in this journey and continues further in her journey and further in her journey. God, we pray for an extra amount of grace and patience from them as they abide with her and walk with her through this journey. Remind us of how much we are all loved and how much we are uh, gifted in your sight. And God, I pray that as energies run low and patience run low, you would just replenish their cup. God, as you replenished the oil for the widow and in Zarephath, I pray that you would just move them in uh, so that as this journey ultimately reaches its conclusion, it can do so in the midst of of your grace and your peace. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray, and together the people of God unify their voice by saying, Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my gospel reading today from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24 verses 20, uh, 44 through 53. Hear these words. Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you've been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Congregation, you may be seated, but if you would, please join us in our hymn of reflection in which we prepare our hearts to receive the preached word.
We all have those moments in our lives where we move from one reality into another reality. And sometimes this can be daunting and it can be uh, something that creates fear and anxiety within us. But regardless of that, the movement is so monumentous that it does not rob us of our joy. Take this, for instance. You guys remember when you got your driver's license? Do you remember the first time you drove with no one else in the car with you? I do. It, it was a weird experience. Well, I grew up in Georgia, and the DMV in the town that I grew up in only offered the driving test every so often, every uh, couple of days during the week, so it wasn't every single day. So I turned 16, and I had to wait an extra day to go get my driver's license, and it was a travesty. And I, but I remember I made it through that day, and then I got to go to the DMV, and I got to take my driving test, and I passed it. And then it was time to go to school. And I remember sitting in my 1993 Nissan pickup truck, five-speed with no power steering. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Thinking to myself, now what? I was sitting in a vehicle behind the steering wheel with the clutch on the floor, with my hand on the steering wheel, and nobody else was in the car with me. That's the first time that had ever happened in my entire life. There was nothing but the sound of my breathing and the jangling of the keys as I tried to put them in the ignition. It was a moment of anxiety and fear that I was about to step off into something I had never, ever done before. But it didn't last long, did it? I turned that engine over. And I drove to school with the biggest newly licensed smile on my face you have ever seen. Because though it was a new experience, though it was something that created anxiety, it was not going to steal my joy, folks. We have other examples. Take this one. It's that time of year again, right? You're going to receive your diploma. You're going to move the tassel over to the other side of your cap. You're going to begin a different chapter in your life, but I promise you, you're not going to let the things and the daunting things and the uncertainties that lie out there steal your joy. On the day of graduation, those that are graduating from college and high school, you're going to celebrate, but you're going to do so with the reality that if you're graduating high school, maybe you're going to college, and now you have to go live away from home, and are you even going to like your roommate? Will you get lost on campus? There's all kind of weird stuff you have to deal with. Maybe you're graduating high school and you're going into the military. That means basic training, which is scary just to say, right? And then you might have to go serve our country in a far-off land and be away from the people you love. Maybe you're going to graduate and enter the job force, and then you have to come to the reality that things cost money. You have to pay your own rent and bills and insurance and car payments, and that's a daunting task. If you're graduating from college, you, maybe you're going to grad school and that has its own problems. And then maybe you're actually graduating and you have to find a job in the field you actually graduated in. Lots of unknowns, lots of uncertainties, but I promise you, 
on this day, you will not let those uncertainties steal your joy. I know it didn't steal mine, and I know it didn't steal yours. We will be overcome with joy despite our anxieties on these types of moments. There's another moment that is full of anxiety and fear. Anyone that tells you they've got this whole having a baby thing figured out just lied straight to your face. You are, and if you say, I'm going to wait till I'm prepared, you're never prepared. You never have enough money in the bank. You have, never have enough certainty of who you are to be a parent. You're standing in a hospital or however you decide this process works for you and somebody, a trained professional, hands you a living human being and puts them in your hands and you look at them and you think to yourself, how does this work? Where's the instruction manual? Will I be a good parent? Will they love me? What kind of personality will they have? Because believe it or not, that's a human being that's going to have their own personality and it might not get along with yours. A lot of unknowns, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. But as you stare down at the face of this helpless child, all of those uncertainties and all of those fears somehow in God's grace begin to melt away and you are not overcome by fear but by love and by joy. These are pivotal moments that most of us in this room have experienced on some level, or you will in just a few years. And these moments, these pivotal moments in our lives remind us that new challenges provide us with opportunities for great joy. There are some challenges in this life that absolutely will not steal your joy, but they will actually add to it. Our gospel reading for today finds us in just such a moment. We're in Luke's gospel, and as we approach our text at the end of Luke's gospel, understand that it's still Easter Sunday. It's still Easter day. So it's quite a whirlwind for Jesus' followers, if you will. And so at the beginning of that day, they greeted the sunrise with the expectation that Jesus, their beloved teacher and leader, was still in a stone-cold tomb. The women have gone to the tomb where in Luke's telling, they find the stone rolled away and they're greeted by two men in dazzling white clothes who tell them, Jesus is not here, he has been raised. So they run back and they tell the apostles and Peter goes to investigate, he finds the empty tomb and we're told that he leaves amazed. But he still doesn't understand. Fearful, probably full of anxiety, trying to figure out what happens. And then we're transported out on the road to Emmaus. A couple of travelers are going back to Emmaus from Jerusalem, and all of a sudden the stranger comes up to them and begins telling them about the Scriptures. They get close to their house, and they're like, well, it's close to the end of the day. Why don't you come in and enjoy our hospitality? And upon breaking bread, they recognize that it's the risen Jesus in their presence. They don't know what to do with this. They're so full of anxiety and, and fear and so many different emotions that they run all the way back to Jerusalem and they go find Jesus' friends and they say, hey, guess what happened to us? And so then they're trying to unpack all of this. They're trying to work through their fear. They're trying to work through their anxiety. They're trying to work through their uncertainty. And then guess who shows up in the middle of the room? Jesus pops right in the middle of them and says, hi, y'all. See my hands, see my feet, it's me. I'm hungry, do you have anything to eat? And then we get to our text. They're in the midst of their what now? What do we do? And here's Jesus. He stands in their midst and he says, I'll tell you what now. He answers it by saying this, Everything happened as it was written. The Messiah must suffer, die, and rise again on the third day. Here's what now, followers of Jesus. A change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. 
Here's the now what, according to Jesus. Jesus says that his friends, his followers, are to preach repentance and forgiveness in his name, beginning right there as soon as they receive heavenly power. It's their turn to carry on the ministry of Jesus. It's time for Jesus' friends to crank up the car and drive it by themselves for the first time without their friend and teacher being present in this world. It's time for Jesus' friends to graduate from Jesus' university and step out into the world to make a difference, to preach forgiveness and the repentance of sins in Jesus' name. Don't you think the world could use a word of forgiveness right now in a time of such brokenness and divisiveness? Wouldn't a word of forgiveness be a welcome change? It was during Jesus' time. It would be during ours too. It's time for Jesus' friends to literally raise up baby Christians so that they become mature followers of Jesus Christ. This is a pivotal moment. Jesus has now commissioned them for ministry, and they could have met this challenge with fear and with dread. I mean, stand there with them, folks. For them, it's still Easter Sunday morning. That morning, they awoke thinking Jesus would be dead, yet now he stands right there with them, telling them, it's time for you to take the reins on the ministry that I have prepared you for. This is a pivotal moment, a challenging moment that would bring Bring even the most mature follower to their knees and could they have met it with fear and anxiety and trepidation yes they could have but instead what was their response they were overcome by joy Jesus leads them out as far as Bethany and he blesses them as he blesses his friends Jesus is taken up into heaven And the text tells us that Jesus' friends were overcome by joy and were found in the temple, continually praising God. And then in the second half of Luke's telling, we call that the Acts of the Apostles, we see Jesus' friends actually taking this ministry, preaching a change of heart and life and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name, first in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Fear and anxiety cannot move such a ragtag group of Galilean uneducated folks to change the world. Fear and anxiety cannot do that. Only joy and love can do such a thing. And it reminds us that new challenges provide us opportunities for great joy. As I read Luke's gospel and we get to the end, I I find it very comforting and exciting that the last image we have of Jesus as he is taken up into heaven is Jesus blessing his friends. Y'all, Jesus had every reason to be cursing his friends. Because if you go back a couple of days, remember that the day that Jesus was crucified, that's not one of his friend's shining moments, is it? Jesus could have been cursing them on his way out of town to reign at the right hand of the Father, but instead, what does he do? He blesses them. He offers his blessing, his joy, his peace, because he knew that what he had commissioned them to do would be frightening. And that with his blessing continually being upon them. Notice Jesus never stops blessing them as He ascends to be with the Father. He never stops. Because He knows that the trying times that await them will also afford them opportunities for great joy. This is good news because Jesus still has not stopped blessing His children. Jesus has still not stopped blessing His church. We are still recipients of Jesus' blessing. We are God's chosen vehicle for change in this world. This is the path that God has chosen. God said, I will send my son. My son will set up the church. The church will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And this church will go out into all the world 
and will share my love and my grace and my mercy and my redemption. And that is a hard task for us to do, but we must do the work. And Jesus still stands there with his arms outstretched, ready to receive, to bless, to hold, and to carry us forward as we do this hard work of ministry. But do the work we must, church. Our pews might be comfortable, but this is not our final resting place. We have entered to worship. We will depart to serve, and we do so at the behest and request and demand of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has commissioned the church to go forth to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name. And now, friends, Jesus has ascended. Therefore, we know that it is our turn. It is our turn to drive the car by ourselves, to put the keys in the engine, turn the motor over, and drive out into the world and tell a hurting world that God loves them, and so do we. It is our turn to graduate from Jesus University and enter into a new phase of life where we go forth where we share the knowledge that we have not because we are haughty and because we are snobbish about what we have but because what we have is so great that we can't wait to share it with somebody else because it changed our lives and it'll change theirs too it's our turn to raise up baby Christians into mature believers of Jesus Christ and in fact this is part of of our United Methodist mission statement, which reads this way, the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Friends, that is why we exist. That is who we are. And it is our turn to step out into the world to raise up baby Christians into mature disciples of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it will transform the world for God's glory and we'll be living into our greatest hope, which is God's kingdom reigning on earth as it does in heaven. This is our calling. We have no greater purpose. And ultimately, if we live into this calling, it will provide ultimate and everlasting joy for all of God's people. Our lives and our world, and the lives of others, by living into this sacred calling, will cause others not to be overcome by fear and trepidation, but by joy. How is Jesus calling you to serve? How have you been gifted? What car has Jesus given you to drive spiritually so that you can change the world? What was your course of study at Jesus University? How can you help make mature disciples of Jesus Christ? How's Jesus calling you to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in His name? How is Jesus calling you to share and speak joy into the lives of others just as Jesus Christ has spoken joy and love into each of our lives? Right now, right this second, this moment, as you hear the gospel proclaimed, it is a pivotal moment. You are being reminded, maybe you're frightened and uncertain about what lies ahead of you if you follow Jesus into ministry, and that's probably an accurate thing because Jesus calls us to some audacious God-sized goals that we can only accomplish through God's grace and mercy. You may be uncertain and frightened about what Jesus calls you to, but don't let your fear overcome you because as followers of Jesus, we are to be overcome not by fear and darkness, but by joy and light. We are not people of fear and darkness. We are people of joy and everlasting light. However Jesus is calling you to serve, I encourage you to follow. Crank up the car and get busy. Receive your diploma from Jesus University and go make a difference in the world. Help make mature disciples of Jesus Christ. However God has gifted you, your gift, whatever it is, is important, valued, and ordained by God you need no further reassurance than that. And if you will use that gift to transform the world, you will be able to sing this simple song with great joy. 
I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart down in my heart to stay. In having the joy of Jesus in your heart and in having the love of Jesus in your heart, I commission you to go forth into our community of Central, to go forth into the city of Florence, to go into the state of Alabama, and to go out into all the world. Preach repentance and a word of forgiveness in Jesus Christ's name. Make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That is who we are. That is who Jesus calls us to be. Let us follow our Savior into such an audacious and God-sized goal. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All who are able, please stand and let's affirm our faith. If you're going to follow Jesus out into ministry in the world, it would be good for us to know exactly who we are following. So let us affirm our faith through the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I would like to call our musicians and vocalists forward for our closing hymn. And as we sing our closing hymn, if you need to come and pray because you just can't find it in your heart to put the keys in that ignition and go forth and serve God, come and pray. Maybe you don't know how God has gifted you and God is calling you. Come and pray. Maybe you're nervous, you've just graduated from Jesus you, and you don't know how to go forth into the world and make a difference, come and pray. Maybe you would like to make mature disciples of Jesus Christ, but you find yourself, even though you might have been in church your whole life, still a baby Christian, come and pray. Whatever is on your heart that can help you more fully live into the calling of Jesus on your life, come and pray. If you'd like me to pray with you, just slip up your hand. Otherwise, I'm going to let you have this time alone with your Savior because it's important to commune with God. God wants to commune with us, commune with Him. As we play and sing, if you would and you need, come and pray.
before receiving the benediction, please be reminded that we have offering plates on the prayer rail and uh, placed as you leave the sanctuary. If you would like to contribute to the mission and ministry of Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church, your financial contributions would be appreciated. And church, we celebrate you because you are faithful and generous in your giving, and thank you for that. You give not out of obligation, but out of grateful hearts because God has first blessed you. And by giving of those blessings, that's one way that we respond to God's goodness in our life. Thank you for responding to God's blessings upon your life. I would also like to thank Harrison this morning for acolyting. I'm so excited to see our acolyte pool ever growing. That is, that is lovely. That is a point of celebration. Now, church, receive the benediction. New challenges provide us opportunities for great joy. Before you leave this place, find someone, a worship leader, tech person, youth director, children's director, secretary, Sunday school teacher, usher, greeter, security team member, faithful church member, just somebody, anyone whose service blesses you and thank them for their faithfulness. And then this week, ask how Jesus is calling you to proclaim his good news to our community and then faithfully and joyfully follow and as you go into the world to love and serve God, go knowing that you're not going it alone. The love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with each and every one of us. That's good news, church. God himself is with us as we do this work of ministry. And we celebrate by joining our voices together by saying, Amen.